Separation of powers. What does separation of powers mean in our day? It has come to mean that the government has checks and balances between the three equal branches of the federal government. Each has some control over the other. Therefore, the government is balanced to protect our rights. That is the intention of the Constitution. But the three branches of the federal government are not separate, but equal. Neither the term separate but equal or the implication that these branches of government are separate but equal is ever included in the Constitution. Look closely at the structure of the government as written in the Constitution. The first article begins with the House of Representatives, followed by the Senate. In Article 2, the third part of the government is mentioned, which is the executive. And lastly, in Article 3, the fourth part of the government, the judicial is mentioned with only a few paragraphs. Now, who elected or appointed or nominated these people? Read the Constitution. It says the people elect the representatives. It says the states appoint the senators. It says the Electoral College votes or nominates and therefore elects the president and vice president. It says the judges are appointed by the president with confirmation by the Senate. It is very clear. The representatives are the voice of the people of the country and therefore the most important voice in the government. The Senate is the voice of the states, and the states had to have a representative just like the people. If the Constitution had not provided the states with a representative, it would never have been signed or ratified. Each of these two groups, the people and the states, formed our country, and each had to have a representative which was accountable to them. These are the two most important parts of the government, and since the House is elected by the people, it is the most important level of the government. It is also listed first. The next part of the Constitution is the, is the executive branch. The president and the vice president are elected by representatives of the people and the states based on the number of representatives and senators. Read Article 2, Article 2 Section 2 of the Constitution to discover how that is to be accomplished. These representatives convene in their respective states as the Electoral College, and it will always have a relationship to the number of members in Congress. The Electoral College has a specific duty, and they are selected to only perform that duty, and after they're done, they're released. Here again are the voices of the states and the people. Since this is a step removed from the people and the states, the executive is not the equal of Congress. Then comes the judicial branch discussed in Article 3. They are not even elected. They are nominated by the president and confirmed by the voice of the states. Therefore, in the eyes of the founders, they do not represent the people or the states, even though the representatives of the states can deny their appointment. They are nominated by the representatives of the states. These justices are a necessary part of government to settle points of law and using their judicial power to ensure that all sides get an equal treatment under the Constitution and the laws established by Congress. The Constitution does not provide them with any power over the laws of Congress, and the judicial branch does not make law. Therefore, they are not a check or a balance of Congress or the executive branch. In actuality, separation of by powers, as defined by the Constitution, is the separation of power of the people and the power of the states. Each of these in, were intended to have power in the government of the country. The states began to lose their power in 1816 when John C. Marshall decided that the Supreme Court had power over them. Then, at the time of the Civil War, they were forced to belong to the Union and lost some more of their authority because of the violation of the laws of God and the Bill of Rights. The final and complete loss of their part in government occurred when the 17th Amendment was ratified. At that time, the states completely lost their representation in the federal government as the senators were changed to represent the people rather than the states. The last major change in our government occurred when the presidents decided they had the right to pass and enforce any laws or regulations they desired. They call these unconstitutional actions executive orders and intend for them to have the force of law. There are no checks or balances in today's government. Even though they're available, no one pays any attention to them. We are as close to a dictatorship and a police state as we can be without actually saying the words. The branches of the government are all taking power under themselves without any regard 
to the contract between the people and the constitution that they have sworn to uphold.